So I lived through that, and I was right at the heart of it because I was really uh, at the center of uh, a disintegrating uh, uh, regime. Um, and so I, I know what, what it is what like. like. I've seen it. And something similar is happening in, in the West, but you didn't have a collapse. You had a financial crisis now uh, that where the market actually did collapse, but then it was kept alive by the authorities. So now people don't realize that the system actually has collapsed. So there's a lot of confusion. I think that the whole uh, uh, economic theory has to be rethought. Uh, this is what uh, capitalism in general, because capitalism has probably not as worked as much as we thought it would. Uh, 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 we have some false ideas ab about markets. You know, uh, it's been assumed that markets uh, tend towards equilibrium, and it's only uh, government interference and other external factors that disrupt the tendency towards equilibrium. And that is a, actually a totally false conception uh, because markets just as easily uh, create what is called bubbles uh, as they do t tend towards equilibrium. And, and this is really your, your theory of reflexivity? That's right. Do you think people should un understand it more? Do people yeah, very much so. I, I, you know, I wrote a book uh, 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 called The Age of Fallibility and I, uh, there I argued that we've had the, the, the age of reason uh, with the Enlightenment. And you have had two, 200 years of Enlightenment. And during those 200 years, we discovered that actually uh, uh, reason uh, uh, doesn't prevail uh, and, and that our understanding is fallible. And we now have to learn to live with, in a world which we don't fully understand. And we have to realize that our understanding is bound to be somehow biased and, uh, and that our bias actually uh, influences then what happens. Uh, so it makes uh, uh, reality very difficult to understand because it's constantly changing. But what can the West nowadays do to, uh, to, to take the upper hand again, not to uh, become lost in its ways? Uh, well, uh, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not so easy, uh, because there is really a lot of confusion. Um, and I'm also confused, so don't think that I, I, I've got Have all I, the, I, the ultimate <laughs> truth, because if I did, I would be contradicting my own beliefs. And so what do you say to the people that say, oh, you, but you're the man who broke the Bank of England? Well, uh, um, I happen to um, understand what was going on. Uh, Mr. Soros, what was your strength as an investor and as a financier? Because it seems that you, you're always looking to actually break the mold. As you were explaining to me, it's trying to understand that actually nothing is set of stone, that sometimes we don't see things which are right in front of our eyes. Well, it, I think it's this, this my philosophy of, of, of imperfect understanding. And, the, the, you know, if you understand that your understanding is imperfect, uh, your understanding has actually improved. So uh, it's partly correcting your own bias and also understand that, that uh, markets, instead of pricing uh, uh, companies correctly, uh, actually o always misprice them, uh, either overvalue them or undervalue them. So to, and to understand how those valuations change because it's not enough to recognize that, uh, uh, let's say, a stock is undervalued. But you also have to identify what is going to change that valuation. So is that your, your piece of advice that you give to investors, apart from having a strong stomach? <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, that's right, and to, to, to correct your own.